here we are, camped in the eastern Sierras again, east of June Lake. Um, at this very remote lo location, uh, we managed to make it out here around 4.30 last night and everything was getting a lot colder. Um, and last night the temperatures got down to a nice toasty, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> We have our new puppy with us and it was a challenge. He, you know, he's very small and young and probably one of the craziest things we've ever done is go on this camping trip in the fall. It's October 2018 with a very young puppy. He has about, he's 11 months. Um, he's a pug dog. Again, we had a, a previous pug dog who passed away last February and we really miss him. His name was Biscuit. This one's named Ranger. <laughs> Uh, that was kind of a joke about, you know, he's supposed to be our big protector out here on the range. But anyway, um, he is, you know, very young, needs to go to the bathroom during the middle of the night, uh, or else we'll have a huge mess in the trailer. On the end of the trailer with the Wave 3 heater going, that was nice and toasty. We put his cr his crate right in front of the heater practically, and he was he was fine all night. He was great. And we did fine too, because we're used to sleeping with all the sleeping bags and the warm clothes on, <laughs> a down hood on that I, uh, a great down hood I found on Amazon that you could just, it's an add on hood. It's not attached to a jacket or anything. You know, we had to get up twice in the middle of the night and take him out with the ice crystals on the ground. And he, he's pretty, dis he's pretty, uh, a little bit uh, perturbed by the, by the weather, but he's doing pretty well for a young dog like this. So I just wanted to share with you briefly the condensation control method that we installed that's actually been fairly good so far. I can't say honestly that it's going to take care of every single condensation drip from the peak of the roof especially. Um, that seems to be my biggest pet peeve is um, the, where we have our bed. It's under the peak and I just really don't like the idea of water dripping on the bed while I'm trying to sleep. Um, and it has taken care of that, but in this kind of weather where it's 10 degrees outside, it was around maybe, I think it was around 30 inside, and um, basically what happens is all the metal surfaces in the A-liner will freeze and get frost on them. And I have watched Slim Potato Head's videos where he's camping in the Canadian winter. It's very admirable and impressive that he can do that. Um, I think he's a lot tougher individual than I am. Um, and his solution to part of it was, for example, on the hinges to put some carpeting, and we haven't done that yet. Actually, for us, the hinges haven't really been the issue. It's been water dripping from the roof on us while we're trying to sleep or while we're trying to cook. And I did message him once. He said, well, he's not really using that solution. I don't know if he has a newer one that I've missed, but um, this one is basically a painter's pull on a bracket on sitting on top of the A walls each corner and the painter's pole is covered with two layers a, a hand towel sections of hand towel sewn in a circle that slides over it and then just some decorative flannel <laughs> that I put on it just kind of makes it more homey but also I think it, it makes it a little bit larger and able to catch more of the moisture um, so what happened with this last night was we didn't have any drips until we didn't have any drips until in the morning we turned on the RV heater because it was just so cold. The Wave 3 was on all night on high and it it kept the dog going. <laughs> but in the morning it just really wasn't warm enough in here for us to be comfortable so we cranked up the RV heater and that felt amazing. Um, the only problem as I mentioned before with the RV heater is that right now the controls that were installed by the um, A-Liner company are down on the floor where basically the temperature is around 30 and the lowest temperature it can read is 40 so it keeps thinking that it needs to run until it reaches 40 and it's never going to reach 40 <laughs> down there there's just too much air infiltration I know a lot of people say we should go around and plug all the leaks but honestly we're just not up for it so our our um, you know there's the water heater there's the the tire the, the wheel wells are steel that absorbs cold. There are just so many things, so many penetrations in the walls of the A-liner that you just, to me, it's just an unending job to fix all those. So, and the floor is very thin. Yes, we could add a whole bunch of carpeting 
um, we have this new puppy and I just didn't want to be cleaning a lot of mistakes and accidents on the carpetings. This has really been great so far. What happened last night was it just didn't form as much moisture up there at the peak and this morning we hardly had any drips. We did get a few though. There was some ice up there and then as we melted the room down it started dripping but really just a couple drips. So I think it's a pretty good solution. The only thing I don't like is that it's a little bit tricky to get it up there. You have to put it up after the walls are up and stand on something to get it up there and um, it fits really pretty tight because there isn't that much room for a painter's pole on top of those A walls up there. It barely fits up there. So I imagine there's a better way to connect something up there across and I, I'm not a fan personally of anything compressing the walls out. I know a lot of people use that as a wind protection technique, but I think it's it defeats the purpose of the latches on the walls because and anything pushing is going to release the tension right there. So we're just hanging this from the top of the peak and um, it's been good so far. It wasn't expensive. It's just a hassle to put it up there, sort of. It, um, I mean, it's not easy. And if you don't put it up just right, it can end up falling. Well, just like the compression poles can end up falling if you don't install them tight enough. So. so to do this project, besides the painter's pole, you need to make three flannel sleeves and three sleeves out of an old hand towel. You stuff the hand towel sleeve inside the decorative sleeve. You buy one of these stainless steel painter's poles and you cut the handle off with a metal cutting blade and wrap the end that's actually kind of sharp unless you can file it down you wrap it in Gorilla Tape and I put this on at this point because it's sometimes when you're putting up the pole it's hard to tell where the sliding part is you need to telescope it as you're inserting it. You insert your finished sleeves on the pole slide them on there and you'd also slide these off if it gets really soaking wet to hang them up to dry. You can see the joint has gotten lost once you get these um, sleeves on here so that's why it's nice to have this Gorilla Tape, piece of Gorilla Tape so you can find this because when you insert it on the brackets as I'll show you you have to be able to move this in and out to get it to really lock in on the wall. And here's how you put it up. We store this at the head of the bed when we're not using it, just behind the pillows. We don't even notice that it's there. You put the fat end, put the fat end in first, because it's the hardest one to get in. You find the joint here, and then you telescope to the skinny end. And shove it on the bracket, and then you rearrange these things. Don't let the fabric bunch up too much. Here are the brackets that I put on the tops of the A walls. They're just two little L brackets that are three quarter inch on a side and half inch across here. Used a metal drill bit for drilling into metal and some sheet metal screws or whatever screws I had in the garage. I mean, they really haven't been moving. The one problem with this is when you raise and lower the walls, this is really pretty sharp. You really kind of have to make, make sure you don't get impaled on these brackets. One final note I'd like to mention is that I'm, a, I'm really looking forward to using this pole in the rain because I don't know if any of the rest of you have had this issue, but I have read about it that a few A-frame owners have noticed when they're hosing off their trailer at the wrong angle when the water's shooting up on this side under that edge there, they get some dripping inside the trailer, and we certainly do. There's really not that much up there. It's not a tight seal, and um, I'm concerned in the, you know, if we get into a really bad rainstorm with wind-driven rain going at the wrong angle, it's going to start coming in on us. So I'm hopeful that this um, contraption with the pole and the sleeves will actually catch some of the rain and then we can just dry it out maybe the next day if it's not raining the next day. Thanks for watching.